So to do it, you are going to need a one quart paint can. And these are available at most of your big box store hardware stores and they cost about three dollars. You're going to need a Progresso soup can and as far as I can tell it pretty much has to be a Progresso soup. Uh, looked at other brands and they just don't seem to work. I also use a canned chicken. Uh, I believe there's also a tuna fish can about the same size. Got the cat teasing the dog over here. And a Denny Moore beef stew can. Okay folks, what I use to drill the holes out in this is called a step bit or a step drill bit. And just one of these at some of the bigger hardware shops can cost you around $35. And I got lucky and I picked up this three pack at a Harbor Freight store. I think it cost me less than 12 bucks, so that was the cheaper route to go for getting these step drill bits. And these are what I'll use to drill out all of our larger holes and all of our cans. So I'm going to get on to that, and I'll get right back to you. Okay, got my holes drilled out. Just kind of went around it and guessed as to where I wanted to put them. And if you want, you can get out a sewing tape and find center and go around and measure it all out equally and put yourself a neat little pattern on top. I just kind of eyeballed this one. I'll be keeping it and using it myself so I'm not too worried about how it looks. And the next thing we're going to do is use a rotary cutting tool. And this is really handy for this project because you get your cutting discs you can get your little wire brushes and you can get your little grinding stones and those will help you to clean up all these nasty burrs that are left from the drill bit. Uh, these have a lot of sharp objects and a lot of sharp spots to them. So I use the cutting tool and I'll cut out a little wood feeding door on this can and our Denny Moore can and get back to you again. On the sides of our Denny Moore can, I've marked three sets of where I'm going to put some small holes here at different depths. And these go around onto the other side, and we want it that way so that we can line them up all the way across the can. Another little tip is I marked out where I'm going to put the fuel feed door. And notice I did it right where the label glue is. We're just going to cut this off and pitch it and that might save us a little frustration later in trying to clean up that label glue we're just not even going to have to worry about it this way so I'm going to go drill that out and cut it up and I'll be back and I'm also going to drill out the bottom of the can here for some more venting oh yeah Moving along, remember our three holes that we put in our stew can? I fashioned some stakes just out of old coat hangers. And we can use these to run through our can. And we'll run all three of them and kind of have a little makeshift grill there that can be moved to different heights. Okay, the soup can. Probably the most important part of this project is the 16 jet holes that we're going to drill around the top edge of the can. The important part of this is that they must be 3 eighths of an inch or more below this rim. Any shorter than that, they won't work. 
as I mentioned I put in 16 jets down at the bottom of the can I've staggered another 16 jets and screened out the whole bottom of it when you're using this in a wood gasification mode your fire is inside of the can so you're going to want your ashes to be able to fall out of the bottom we want unused gases or smoke to travel out of these holes and travel up the wall of the can where it will escape through these jets and be reignited by the fire inside so you're getting two burns off of one fuel I think it's a good idea to stagger these on the bottom in case you get some ash build up it still allows it to breathe at different depths uh, just my idea there well here's our paint can after we've drilled four holes around the bottom of it and the very bottom I used a safety can opener to remove that now a good tip is to be sure and drill your four holes before you remove the bottom otherwise the can will get kind of squishy on you and you'll crush it up so by now you should be accumulating a pile of cans that resemble cheese graters and it's at this point where I like to go through them all and hit them with wire brushes and uh, grindstones maybe a rat tail file and try to get rid of all these nasty little burrs in here I hope you can see those try to dull up any of the sharp edges and uh, a lot of these little chips and slivers get to flying around so if, if you're gonna take on a project like this please be careful uh, I'd hate for someone to get cut open or uh, hate to see you get a metal chip in your eye or something like that I'm not just saying it I'm practicing it got my work gloves got my safety glasses and anybody who's doing projects like this should do the same uh, it's just not worth it to hurt yourself just to have a little cook set so please be safe so for the first burn off I'm going to use the paint can I'm going to use the bottom of the paint can I'm going to fill this full of twigs and leaves and shreds of paper whatever I can find it's been raining around here for a few days but we'll see if we can get it going and then I'm going to set our stew can on top and let that burn off for a little bit and burn some of that paint out of there and get this one taken care of moving forward I've got all the paint and stuff burned out of our paint can and now I'm going to insert our soup can into the paint can and that will take us from more of a hobo fashion of a stove into a wood gasification type of stove now this soup can fits perfectly right inside of this can. It's just going to pop right in there and fit around that lip. I don't know who originally discovered this but they were either bored or brilliant and if you've seen this before at home on other videos maybe you wondered like I did how well does that work? Is that really going to stay in there? And I'm here to testify to you folks it really does work. In fact it can be a little stubborn at times but it'll seat in there really well. It just pops into place. And we're good to go. Nothing does not come out of there. And it is removable, so you're not just stuck with this method. You can go back to the hobo fashion if you'd like. So I'm going to pop this back in here. I'm going to take it back over to the grill. And we're going to get it set up and do another burn.
be careful not to breathe any of this smoke. It is toxic at this point. After we've got everything burned out of these, I'm going to take uh, the rotary tool and some wire brushes and my regular drill and a good wire wheel. And I'm going to clean them up as good as I can. Afterwards, I'm going to give them two coats of high heat paint. I like this brand here because uh, you don't have to bake everything to make it set. You just spray it on and let it dry. I like to give them two coats. There's enough paint in one can to do a whole set. And I like to hang on to the leftovers for touch up. So we'll get that done. Alrighty then. At this point, we've got uh, all our holes drilled out. We've got our doors cut. Got a big dog barking in the background. And, um,. We cleaned up all of our burrs and removed sharp edges and we did a little test burn on them to remove any toxic liners and toxic smoke and gave them a coat of heat paint and let that dry overnight. The only thing that I did not coat with heat paint or burn off was the lid to the paint can. Kind of just left that the way it came. Uh, we're still not quite done yet though. We need another addition and that is going to be some type of an alcohol stove. I use these little handmade pop can stoves. Some folks like Trangias. And I also made a windscreen that fits onto our stew can. So I guess we can start going over uh, some of the ways that we can use this kit. So I have to say, one of the reasons I'm so crazy about this little YouTube project stove is the versatility that comes with it. The bottom of the paint can makes an excellent spill tray for your alcohol stoves. After it's heated up and going, we can use our pot stand and it fits right inside of that paint bottom. Now we have a pot stand for our alcohol stove. We can flip this over and we can install say some hexane fuel tabs or the good old cotton ball and wax. I like to include a few tea candles and this will fit three tea candles in there. And we can use our little stakes and put them through depending on what type of fuel source we're using and how high above that we want our pot to sit and lower our pot down inside of there. Now, a lot of your common pots like your Stanley pot those will fit right down inside of these. So you can keep your coffee warm with candles or use hexane fuel tabs <clears throat> whatever you like. Point is you have that adjustable grill height there that way. Remember I was talking about leaving our lid clean. We can put our lid back on. And use our windscreen. And you can have a makeshift candle holder. Aside from that, we have our good old hobo method of cooking with either a short or a tall pot stand and we can insert our soup can and have our gasification stove. In the end it all pretty much nests together.
Another cool addition to this is a ditty bag. Our good buddy 39 camper, he ran out and he found these at Wally World, I believe. I was crying and telling him we need some kind of stuff sack for this. And he discovered that this fits really nicely in the smaller size bag. You can cinch it up. And you've even got a little extra room in this bag, so if you wanted to add, say, a larger bottle of alcohol for your other stove, or maybe some fat wood, or some pre-made feather sticks, whatever, there's a little extra room in this bag. But it all makes for a nice little stuff sack. You got your kit, lightweight, good, ready to go. So thanks to 39 Camper for that tip. So there you have it. Nice little versatile stove that all nests together. I like the fact that we have room inside of here for storage. Put my alcohol stove in there. Don't forget my steaks. Maybe a little bottle of alcohol. Small ferro rod matches whatever you think you're gonna need as long as it fits in there I use a length of paracord and kind of gift wrap it and bundle it all up and keep it together throw it in your little stuff sack there and you're good to go so I'd like to remind everybody be careful when you're playing with fire don't go burning down the forest. Don't give yourself a nasty alcohol burn while you're out in the bush and away from medical attention. Just be careful with these things. Is that my timber, Wookie? If you like what you see on my channel, go do it yourself. Bet you thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? <laughs>